So I've heard a lot, a ton of DACs over the past several years. DACs ranging from, I think, $150 all the way into the crazy stratosphere pricing. I think the most expensive DAC I've heard was either the DCS Lena or the Cord Dave. Uh, well over 10K for those DACs. The DAC I'm talking about today is not anywhere close to the prices of those DACs but it performs to the same level of those $10,000 and up DACs. This, I'm gonna predict, is going to be the hottest DAC this year to come out in the audiophile, audio, hi-fi, high-end audio world. This is such a beautiful DAC, and I wanna tell you guys all about it. But first, let's get some updates. So before we get going with the live, I just wanna share with you real quick what's in for review. These are the Triangle 40th Anniversary Magellan Duettos. These are made in France. These are Triangle's flagship bookshelf speaker, two-way, I should say. Oh, they're seven grand. Uh, the stands are extra. I have the stands coming tomorrow, um, but these are drop-dead gorgeous in looks. And check out this speaker binding post. It's probably the nicest one I've ever seen in a speaker. Very beautiful. Um, awesome, awesome speakers. Review soon. I have the Borison X2s in. Now, I recently reviewed the X1s. These put out way more bass in this room anyway, but I'll have a review of these very soon. That same kind of sound, but basically with more bass and power behind it. Um, the Yamaha AS3200 flagship integrated from Yamaha. I'm going to have a review soon. I already have the written review at my website. And uh, yeah, I've heard so many integrateds. I've heard them from... Accuphase, Luxman, I've owned them from Luxman, Macintosh, Yamaha. So this sits right up there with those. Beautiful amp, beautiful amp in every way. Check out the review on the website and my video will be coming very, very soon. Oh, I also have these Virum 2 headphones. I'll have a video on these in the next week or two. The Galleon TSA 75 two-channel power amplifier. I think this thing's it's a 1500 bucks. Um, Thomas says it's a giant killer. Now I've listened to it with several sets of speakers and a few different preamps. So my review's coming for that as so well. So in addition to the gear here that's in for review, that's coming very soon. I also just changed the name of this channel to Hi-Fi Huff. Kind of rolls off the tongue better than Steve Huff Photo and Hi-Fi. So if you see a video from Hi-Fi Huff, that is still me from this channel. So the Live DAC, you spell it L-A-I-V, but it's actually called Live, is a beautiful, stunning design. I love the small footprint. I love the feet. I love the fact that it has a dial that your finger can choose the inputs with. The display is something like 3.83 inch uh, monochrome display. It's nice and bright. You can also turn it off. Uh, this also has all of the inputs and outputs you need. It has balanced outs. It has single-ended RCA outs. It has your optical, coax, USB, and it even has an I2 squared input uh, that I believe automatically configures to whatever streamer you're hooking up to it. Now, what else can I tell you about the DAC? It uses all premium parts inside, high-end capacitors, parts from AudioNote. It's a unibody design. The thing feels solid as a metal brick in the hand, but it's not overly heavy, though it's not light or hollow feeling. It seems like Live packed as much as they could into this little enclosure, but it fits perfectly and the design is impeccable. So this is the first product from the brand new company Live based out of Singapore and what a launch they have done. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. So right out of the gate, the build is stunning. The design is stunning. The packaging is probably the finest packaging for a high-end audio piece that I've come across to date, regardless of cost. What does this thing sound like? So I put it into my system and I have various speakers here to test out. I had a few amps to test out with it. One thing kind of kept creeping in no matter what speakers I used or what amps I used. And that was the stunning amount of detail that the Harmony deck can dig out from the depths of the recording. It reminded me a lot of the Chord Dave. And that was the this is the first DAC that brought back memories of the Chord Dave into my mind. And I said, this is bringing out Chord Dave levels of detail. 
and uh, magic, really, but it does it with a little more gusto and a little more um, warmth. As soon as I put it in the system, I heard this change of sound. The sound became a little more alive, a little more open, a little more electric, but there was a density and thickness to the sound, a foundation, I should say, of that bass. And it, it, it was just spatial as well. There was a little bit of a spatial thing going on where high-end pieces normally do this, where you can sit in that sweet spot and everything, if everything is set up just right, you can actually see the instruments in the space they should be on the stage. And some pieces do this better than others, but in general, it's everything as a whole, your amp, your DAC, your speakers, your room, your setup. But with this DAC, I was hearing these things with no matter what speaker I used and no matter what amp I used. I was a little bit in disbelief and I immediately uh, wrote the guys over at Live and I said, wow, you have something special going on here. This is really an incredible DAC. And while it's $2,700, again, it performs, looks, feels, everything, much like the over 10K uh, series of DACs that you can get out there. Uh, it also, to me, uh, is just as refined as a DAC like the Weiss DAC 501 that's almost 10 grand. It's just as refined as something like the Dana Fripps Terminator 12th anniversary that I reviewed last year, though it has a different sound from the Dana Fripps sound. The Dana Fripps sound is a little more warm, laid back, spatial, immerses you in. The Live Harmony DAC immerses you in as well, but it's a little more electric, a little more alive. There's been a lot of DACs that I've fallen in love with. I'll go back, the DCS Lena. Very expensive DAC, but I lived with that DAC for about a year. I loved it, it was beautiful. Um, but then I, I tried a different flavor, right? I had a Chord Dave here for a while, beautiful. I had a Chord Cutest, I've had Dana Fripps DACs here. I've had so many DACs here, I can't even remember all of the ones I had. I heard the Holo May that everybody raved about over the last year or two. And I even think this live harmony is a hair better. I don't want to say better because it's all just differences, but I enjoyed the live harmony deck. I'll say that a little bit more than the holo may top end that everybody was raving about. I got to hear that holo and I thought it was a beautiful deck, but I didn't have it long enough to do a proper review. But I have to say this live harmony is a little bit reminiscent of that deck as well, but I think it's a little more better in the way it digs out those lower level details and pops them out. Um, compared to any internal deck I've heard, whether it's the Daniel Hertz Maria or the Axis Forte 1, the Harmony is a much better deck than those in my opinion. There's something really special going on with the Harmony deck. All right, so here is a closer look at the live Harmony deck. I'm going to go over the menu here with you. Um, so this dial here changes your inputs. You might see some waviness. That's an effect of the camera. It doesn't look like that in real life. Um, so you see optical coax, I2 squared, USB optical, and then you just pick your input. Then you have options of oversampling or non-oversampling. So right now it's an oversampling. So for example, if I stream Spotify, say, from the RS-130, as I was doing here, Strand Evokes, In Heaven, Amazing Album, give it a listen. Sounds beautiful. Um, I like to use, if I'm using Spotify, I like to use the oversampling because it adds life. It makes Spotify sound as good as Tidal to these ears. Um, and if I'm listening to Tidal through this or Cobas, I put it on non-oversampling. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to Spotify and non but the oversampling does seem to add a little depth to it. So you go back to there and it's a very easy menu to configure. Um, there's nothing, it doesn't go very deep, the menu. It's a very simple menu. You can change the phase. Uh, I don't know what it does with the remote. Oh, I guess you can configure the buttons on the remote. That's pretty cool. I'm not gonna mess with that right now. The display, you have options, I guess. I don't know what. Oh, bright, delay, track info. If you're playing CDs, I believe, through this, it'll show the track info on the screen. So you could change the brightness. It's on high, medium, low. That's kind of cool. So it's very easy to configure. 
And let me get the silver one here and show you a close-up of the Here's the back. Here's the silver model. Now, between black and silver, I think they both look beautiful. Maybe the black, I think I have a preference for. But it has balanced outs, RCA outs, your I2 squared in, your coax in, your optical in, and your USB in, and of course, your power cable. Very simple, very easy to. I have just completely fallen in love with this deck. Not the first time I've fallen in love with a deck, but the key here is it sounds like a 10K and up deck, but it costs $2,700. Now, the remote control is a thing of beauty. Solid metal, beautiful big buttons. It can operate two devices because live will be coming out with new products uh, coming soon, I guess. They're gonna have a whole line of products. And another cool thing they did with the Harmony DAC was they put little notches on the top so you can put, say, maybe a streamer. If they come out with a streamer or a headphone amp, you could set it right on top of the DAC and it'll look perfect and nice and sweet. It also comes with a little uh, tool to place the little uh, brass feet or golden colored feet. So when you put the DAC, you can you put it directly on those feet. It's really cool. It's, a, it's like an alignment tool for the feet. Put the feet in, move the tool away, set the DAC right on top. A pretty cool little thing to add that I've never seen anyone add before. It's those nice little touches. They seemingly thought of everything. Now I tried this DAC with the i2 squared input coming from my Hi-Fi Rose RS-130 streamer. I also tried it with the coax and optical and USB. All in all, my favorite of the inputs was the i2 squared and the coax. They sounded similar to me, but I ended up staying with the coax because I have a really nice digital cable. And the sound has just been heavenly, glorious, velvet-like, but big, beautiful, detailed, without any harshness, coolness, coldness, grayness, hash, any of that. This is a refined DAC. And I would say that if you're gonna spend 9,000 and under on a DAC, you must audition the Harmony. If you're going over 9,000 and you have a big, big budget, check out things like the DCS Bartok maybe, but I think that's 20 grand these days. It might give you a little bit of an edge over the Harmony, but I'm not so sure. I heard that Bartok a couple of times over the last couple of years. I really love that DAC, but the Harmony, it's a little different in the sound, but I wouldn't say it's better or worse. So this DAC is really, really, really nice, guys, from the build to the design, to the solidity of it, to the performance, to the way you control it, to the remote control. I've never in life seen a finer DAC anywhere near this price. I mean, that's the bottom line. And my guess is when you see other reviews, I think there's already a couple of reviews out. Uh, Six Moons made it their reference DAC from what I've been told. Um, and it's going to be my reference DAC as well. This is a beautiful DAC. I can highly recommend it. And let me go back a little bit to why I changed the name of this channel. The name of this channel is now Hi-Fi Huff uh, instead of Steve Huff Photo and Hi-Fi. Um, I don't see what I do here as reviews for you guys. I'm not gonna call these reviews really. They're more about the experience. Uh, I'm just a guy who's been in the Hi-Fi for 35 years, built systems for 35 years. It's been part of my life every day. I listen to music every day. I've heard hundreds, if not thousands of pieces of gear. So what I'm doing here is just relaying my experience with the good stuff I find. And I only do videos for the good stuff I find. I don't do videos if it's subpar, if somebody says, hey, I'll pay you a grand to make a video on this. If it's crap, no, I'm not gonna do a video on it. And, and, and that's kind of a thing I have. Maybe it's an issue I have because it severely limits the content, but I only feel if it's worthy of a purchase, that's the only way I should talk about it. So this DAC is definitely one I can't imagine anyone being unhappy with. I can see a future where it's gonna be sold out for a while because these reviews are gonna hit. So take a look at the live uh, website. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, I think they give you a two year warranty with the Live Harmony. They give you free shipping. You could even talk to them, a consultant before you purchase. Easy online purchase. Mine, after it shipped, got here in two to three days. So um, yeah, very, very cool uh, product. And if you're an audio enthusiast, a lover of hi-fi, if you have a system that you set up uh, for your sweet spot, 
try to audition the Live Harmony deck. It might even beat the deck you have now, and that's not a joke. This is not hype. Some products are worthy of hype, and this is one of them. So that's it. That's my thoughts on the Live Harmony deck. It's not going to go back to Singapore. It's staying right here. It, it's that good. It's beautiful. And the only ones that I've heard that were similar were all over $10,000. So this is going to be a firecracker of a deck, guys. Uh, take a look at it over at their website. There's more information. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll have reviews coming very soon. I promise you, I've been really busy over the last few weeks of the Thomas and Stereo, the Galleon TSA 75 amp. Ugh. 1500 bucks. Is it a real giant killer like Thomas says? I'll let you know my experience. The Yamaha AS3200. Is, can Yamaha stand up to the big Luxmans and the big AccuPhase and the big Macintosh amps? I'll talk about the AS3200, but a sneak peek, I have a written review of it already at my website. Uh, and I'll be doing reviews of all kinds of things here. The new Verum 2 headphones in the next couple of weeks I'll be talking about. Uh, as well as everything else that I have here to show you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I love you all. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.